Hi everyone, welcome back to the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center. I'm Kelly Sheppens, Director of Student Programming here. Um, today we're going to be talking about amphibians. So amphibians would be um, a creature that is cold-blooded, has slimy wet skin, um, and goes through something called a life cycle. So it starts part of its um, life in the water and then it will finish the rest of its life on land, sometimes going back into the water um, and sometimes not going back to the water at all. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about those as well. And we have several that we use in our programs um, that we're going to be introducing you to today. So this poster is just one example of an amphibian's life cycle. So this is a frog that we have up here. It's going to lay its eggs in the pond. When those eggs hatch, it's going to be what we call a tadpole. It has a tail, almost looks, looks slightly like a fish almost. Um, as it starts going through its life cycle, it's going to grow legs. All of those legs there, so it's going to get four legs. Um, those gills are going to start to disappear. The tail is going to start to disappear as well, and then eventually their lungs are going to be developed enough that they can leave the pond. So some of our amphibians, they are going to stay in the pond um, as they go through their life cycle. They may leave and not come back to the pond until it's time to lay their eggs again. Others, like our bullfrog, they live around the edges of the pond, so that is their habitat. Um, so they'll always be located right at the pond. So let's talk about salamanders. We have several salamanders here at the Ruth Patrick. This first one that I'm gonna tell you about is called a tiger salamander. So he kind of gets his name because he almost looks like he has the tiger stripes that run down his back, especially on his tail. So he is an amphibian. So he has that wet, slimy skin. Um, he has four legs and he's gonna breathe through lungs once he leaves the pond. Um, with this guy, you're gonna find all of our salamanders that we're looking at today. Um, out in the woods, underneath of an old log, somewhere that's dark and moist, um, where they can they can find a good supply of food as well. If you're, they stay out to the sun too long, then they'll dry out. And this is our red salamander that we have. So he's one of my favorite at the Ruth Patrick that we have here. So it still has that slimy wet skin. Um, in their habitats that we have, we have some um, little coverings that they can get under and they prefer to stay under those um, until it's time to be fed. So we feed these guys, we feed them um, crickets and mealworms several times a week. Um, and they're not very active because they are cold blooded, um, but they do get excited when it's time to, to be fed. This one I really like, especially if you can get a close up of his, of his little face. He always looks like he's listening and watching you. This is a marble salamander. It gets its name because of its coloring. It's got the, the white, whitish gray on a, a black um, body there. So it almost looks like it's a marble in color. Um, normally they stay very still, almost like marble. Um, or a statue um, until it's time to pounce for their prey. And they get a little excited and get some activity to them. So this one here is not gonna get too much bigger um, than it is right now. Um, but because he's in captivity, he also he won't get as big as you normally would see out in the wild. This amphibian is a tree frog. So we have two different types here at the Ruth Patrick. The first one is a green tree frog. It has smooth green skin. Um, tree frogs have a special characteristic or adaptation that they can actually climb trees. So if you look very closely at their toes, it almost looks like they have suction cups on the tips of their toes and they can use that to climb up in the trees. So our green tree frog is going to use his body color as camouflage and he's going to blend in with the leaves of the tree. Um, they can actually change shades of green that they are. So when we first get him out of his tank in the morning for class, um, he will be a bright green color. And then as classes progress, um, he will start to kind of 
blend in a little bit with the bark and things that we use in their little containers during class and turn into a darker green. Our other tree frog is a barking tree frog. It still has that same green coloring, but if you look at its back, it almost looks like it has little brown or black spots on its back as well. And it's gonna camouflage in with those leaves also. So it's gonna go a variety of different colored greens to browns um, to blend in. They get their name because of their call. So at night, when it's, the sun starts to set, you can hear tree frogs talking to each other and it sounds like small dogs almost barking back and forth at each other. So another amphibian we're going to talk about is our southern toad. So unlike our other amphibians um, that had the smooth wet slimy skin, he has more of a dry, bumpy skin, and it, we're gonna use that skin to kind of blend in with the soil in our area. So he, he's kind of a brown in color and almost red. I'm gonna try to turn him around a little bit so you can see him better. So almost a reddish in color. So he's gonna blend in nicely with the clay in the area of the CSRA. So he has shorter back legs for a little hopping. Um, and then he's got some other cool characteristics too. Might be too small for you to see, but behind his eye, there is a circle. It almost looks like a perfect circle back there. And those are actually the ears of our toad. So those ears, they don't have outer ears like we do. All their ears are on their inner side and they're covered with a thin, um, a thin piece of skin that protects those ears. 